One of the most popular types of home-based businesses in the new millennium is a network marketing business. Put away all of your preconceptions about network marketing that you have from the media or from that over-aggressive relative that you know. There are some very good reasons why network marketing has grown and will continue to grow in the future. Most people who know my work know that I'm fairly positive, if not waxing enthusiastic, about network marketing. It's not so much network marketing, but it's the alternative to network marketing. For someone going out today to start a business, there's endless companies who are in the business of selling them kits to start a business. Those kits typically start at $10,000 or $20,000 or $30,000 for a franchise or $100,000. I always say when you go to start a business and you meet one of those franchise operators and you ask the price, they go, how much do you have? Because they seem to tailor a program to get every dollar you've got saved into their pockets and sign for everything you have or are capable of signing for in terms of credit. So I don't like seeing people who are frankly not experienced business people, jump out as entrepreneurs and buy a franchise or some type of business with supposedly buying expertise, but frankly, the franchisor doesn't often care whether or not they're going to succeed because they make their money selling the business kit. What I like, make that love about network marketing, is if I'm a network marketer and I spend time recruiting you and you fail, I lose. I'm the one who loses all my time recruiting you and teaching the business. Because virtually all the quality network marketing companies do not allow the distributor to make money recruiting. If you look close at all the companies from the Access Business Group that descended from Amway through Newskin, through Neekin, through anyone I can think of, they subscribe to a code of ethics that say, we will not give points or make money for recruiting new distributors. We will only pay our people when the distributors in their downline actually move product and sell something. That means that the person who meets you has to make a quick judgment. Can you make it? Can I work with you? They're not interested in blindly just getting your $50 or whatever it costs to start. So what I like about it so much is the person recruiting you will only reap rewards if you reap some rewards. What I also like about it is when we go to hire my managers, myself, I go, ah, that person's not good enough. That person's this. And I'm sorry to say it, but we make decisions every day and I'm sure we're wrong a lot. Ever think you should have hired someone or they had a disability and you wanted to give them a chance, but you couldn't. And the back of your mind was, it would have changed that person's life, but I'm running a business, I couldn't take that risk. What I love about network marketing is the person entering network marketing, regardless of his past background or experience, they can make it if they really want to. They really want to focus, regardless of how many troubles, how many credit problems, what they've experienced in the past, they get the chance. And that's one of the reasons, almost, and again, in a theological or spiritual way, I really love network marketing, because it gives opportunity to people that for some things that's happened in their life before, they wouldn't have gotten that opportunity anywhere else. People often ask me, can you really make it in network marketing? And of course, if you ask my wife or family that, we honestly know maybe 400 people, 500 people making over a million a year in network marketing. From our perspective, we think it's great. But keep in mind, I'm speaking for a lot of these organizations. And of course, I know the CEOs and top distributors. I think the number of the people who really make big money in network marketing is something like 3%. And people think that's bad. I don't think that's bad. If 1% of the people in America ever make it to being financially independent and 3% of network marketers do, what does that tell you? It's 3% compared to what? The reason 3% or in some cases even less of network marketers, quote, make money or make a full-time living is that, thank God, network marketers take anyone. If you want to spend your $50 and convince someone to get into their downline and build that business, they're going to eventually let you in. That's an amazing item. If you go looking for a job somewhere, how many jobs are you going to knock on the door of big companies to say, I want to be your president, I want to do this, I want to be your top salesman, and even get in the door to get the job and get the opportunity? So the reason the statistics don't look good in network marketing for how many succeed is the beautiful part about network marketing. They let anyone spend their 50 or 100 bucks or some small number to try to see if it's going to work for them. But fundamentally, network marketing works and is working very well today because of a change in retailing distribution in our economy. The traditional retailer, I call it pre-1960s, spent time educating you about the product and service. You went into the store in the department store and said, I'm fighting about washing the dishes at night. And they go, let me show you a dishwasher. No, he's the dishwasher. After we, No, no, a machine that'll wash dishes. Wow. Or a toaster or a vacuum cleaner. And you learned about all this. That's who our parents learned about an amazing amount of appliances that added to their lives. 
Then came the Walmarts and the mass merchants the last 30 years. They did a terrific job, and they decimated the other retailers, selling you what you knew you wanted before you entered the store. You went to Walmart or a Target, as you do today, to know exactly what you want, and you get it, and you get out. But what about new products and services? How are you going to learn about them? The bottleneck in our economy today and the greatest opportunities in retailing and in distribution are in teaching people about new products and services that will improve their lives. The best mechanism we currently have to teach people about new products and services is network marketing. The reason is when it comes to learning something new, particularly a new diet or vitamin regimen where you're sort of set in your ways, you will reject the unknown. All of human knowledge is really the quest for order. We hate disorder. We want to have an orderly life. When someone comes to us and says, this is a different way of doing it, we reject them out of hand. Ever watch when you see television, you don't like the commercial because it's not your brand of product? How fast do you hit the remote control? I learned this in the late 80s and early 1990s when I used to be much more active as a commentator on national public radio and on CNN. On television or on radio, information is in a passive medium state. The information is presented to you, but you're often doing something else. Think about it. You're leaning back on the couch watching TV. And if I present to you a radical new concept that challenges your mind on television, you're not in this state ready to receive it. In fact, you'll probably change the channel. Think of the difference when you're sitting one-on-one -on -one with someone who's got your attention and politeness or whatever makes you focus on them. That's how you're going to learn a new theory, a new concept, or try something new not watching television, not listening to the radio. In effect, network marketing works so well because it's such an active medium for presenting a new idea or a new concept to people versus the way we get our information today through television or radio, which is totally passive. Since I seem to know the CEO or top distributor both of perhaps the 200 largest direct selling companies in this country, people are always asking me what makes them successful. I'd love to tell you they were on the street and they were bum and they had no opportunity and boom, they got into one of these businesses and made millions. But it's not true. The reason my wife and I are friends with so many of these families is they're really quality people. They're people, frankly, who would have made it in virtually any business they went to. I know that's not what most network marketers want to hear. They want to hear that the person had no chance, no opportunity, no education, and really wasn't even nice, made a lot of money. But it's not true. Most of the people who make it big in network marketing would have made it big in any other profession. But for some reason, they couldn't afford the tuition at law school, or they dropped out of college because they had a drug problem sophomore year, or they had to go support somebody. There's a story with how they fell off what we might call the classic track to business success in this country, and they chose network marketing because there wasn't any other opportunity. But when you meet them, you can see by personality, by diligence, by work habits, they're the same success people that could be running any Fortune 500 company. This is not to say there aren't the people who, frankly, couldn't have made it anywhere else and network marketing was the only thing for them. There are those people. But at the very top of the network marketing business, the majority of people are quality individuals who frankly could have made it in any other corporate or legal or medical environment, but for some reason or another fell off the track and network marketing provided them the opportunity. Now keep in mind, I know so many people who are very successful doctors, dentists, lawyers, reached the pinnacle in their field and said, gee, it's not what I really want. I'm making three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year, but I'm not happy. I need people in my life. I need to train people. I need to develop people. And that's why you see many successful professionals crossing over and abandoning successful practices and going into network marketing because their practice or their business wasn't giving them the interpersonal rewards they get from a network marketing business where they're constantly meeting and training and developing other individuals. One of the things I also like so much about network marketing is the way these businesses develop your skills. I just recently signed a contract with an individual who's installing an elevator in our home. When my wife and I met him, he knew me from network marketing businesses. He was at a very high level. I said, well, what are you doing doing the elevator business? He said, well, I really made it big in network marketing. I was making $250,000 a year when I met you, Paul, and I was in my late 20s. So it obviously was working for me. But the skills I learned about managing businesses... I had worked for this little elevator store, and before I knew it, I was managing the elevator store. Then I owned it. Now I'm doing 98% of the personal residential elevators installed in the state. All from the skills and training materials I learned in network marketing, I'm making over a million dollars a year. I never had a chance to learn how to do that and have that confidence in myself without network marketing. 
Now, this is an extreme example, but across the board, I can say that almost anyone getting involved in a network marketing business is going to be exposed to training and materials and belief systems and management systems for their time that, frankly, the average person doesn't get. They don't teach you this in high school or college. That skill base is going to help them in their regular business, even if they don't succeed classically in the network marketing business. In fact, I often, when I sign books and I'm giving a speech for network marketers, I like to get a little time and I say, how's the business working for you? Well, they tell me what level they're at, how many years they've been doing it, six, seven, eight, and they're not at the level where they're really able to support themselves. And I say, can I ask a question? They go, you're asking us why we keep doing it, Mr. Pilzer, even though we haven't, quote, made it. Well, we love it and it helps us with our family and we enjoy coming to the functions and we get so much more out of it than just money, which brings us to the real reward in network marketing. You're always dealing with new people. You're always giving somebody a chance or opportunity to do something that they felt for some reason they didn't get to do based on their prior choices in life. You're always teaching what you know about management, about family, and values. And that comes with so many more rewards for the teacher than money itself. In choosing a new business opportunity, or particularly a home-based business, people always ask, what should they go do? And of course, today I'm very high on the wellness business, as I see it as a new emerging industry that's very exciting and holds huge benefit for your customers. But the truth is, virtually any business will work. In any business, in any field, it's the motivation of the individual, the concern for the end-use customer and how much they can add value to make that end-use customer have a more positive experience that ultimately determines success. We like to think in terms of macro terms and numbers, but frankly, it's statistics. Macroeconomics and big numbers and trends really don't matter because you're not going to be able to do more than one business at a time, and over a lifetime, you might do three, four, five, eight of them, not three, four, five hundred of them. So statistics and probability and all the things that people turn to me as an economist to tell them about really don't apply to the individual. What matters is the motivation of the individual to succeed, not the overall field they might choose.